Hey, Mermico team! Today, I want to talk to you about a truly striking species. If you're looking for a colony that's active, powerful, fast, a bit brutal, but incredibly fascinating to watch, then Myrmicaria brunea is definitely for you. First off, the way they move is really unique. They walk with their gaster tucked under their thorax, which gives them a very distinctive posture, almost threatening. And it's not just for show. This position allows them to spray acid when threatened, like a tiny chemical weapon, and they often do it while raising their thorax, like they're striking a pose. It's one of the only species that defends itself like that, and honestly, it's impressive to watch. The queens are fairly large, about 12 to 14 millimeters, with a massive thorax and long legs. The workers are smaller, between 4 and 8 millimeters, but there's a lot of size variation between individuals, even though they're technically monomorphic. Males range from 8 to 10 millimeters. As for color, it's reddish brown from the head to the petiole and the gaster is black. That contrast looks amazing, especially under natural light. And their mandibles, they're not just decoration, they're strong and built to tear apart insects, but also larger prey like small lizards, amphibians, and even young mammals in the wild. This is a predatory species, highly organized and aggressive when necessary. They're known for their strategic group behavior and excellent recruitment. When they find prey, it's not just one or two ants, it's a full assault team that shows up. They easily cover a hunting area of about 300 square meters and even compete with species like Carabara. Their nests are built in the ground, usually forming big visible mounds and sometimes include satellite nests. We call that polydomy, multiple nests connected as one colony. Populations can reach 10,000 individuals, so you'll need to think ahead when planning their setup. The queens are particularly impressive with enormous ovaries that reduce their mobility, but explain their intense egg laying. And yes, this is a polygyne species. You can have dozens of queens living peacefully together in the same colony. Nuptial flights happen during the rainy season from May to October, and they found colonies independently through claustral founding. That means the queen seals herself off and feeds her first brood on her own. But this is a very sensitive phase. Stress is your enemy here. So isolate her, keep her in darkness, and avoid vibrations, otherwise she might abandon or eat her brood. As for housing, a simple 18 or 20 millimeter test tube works fine at first, but be careful, they're diggers. So once the colony starts growing, transfer them to a solid plaster nest or reinforced aerated concrete or they'll chew right through it. Humidity-wise, they like tropical conditions, between 60 and 85%. The best setup is to offer a dry tube and a moist one, so they can choose based on what they need. Temperature-wise, they're happiest around 26 degrees Celsius, though they can handle a bit more or less. Just keep in mind that long-term deviations can affect their lifespan. They don't have a true diapause, but their rhythm slows based on environmental conditions. In captivity, it's good to give them a pause between December and March, at about 16 to 20 degrees Celsius. Their development cycle is exogenous and heterodynamic, meaning it adapts to the environment and it's fast, only 40 days from egg to worker. That's impressive. Food-wise, variety is key. Sugary liquids, homemade jellies, live or dead insects, and even bits of raw meat now and then. Just be careful to prevent drowning. Use soaked cotton instead of open dishes. They love that sweet protein combo and during growth phases, they'll consume a lot. What's great about Myrmicaria brunia is that despite their aggressiveness, they're not escape artists like Fidoli. They're lively, dynamic, but manageable, especially if you love watching action in the foraging area. They're constantly on the move, they recruit fast, and they think tactically. If you manage the founding phase and nest conditions well, they can even work for careful beginners looking to try exotic species. But in large formats, things get much harder to manage. You'll need to plan for expansions and have strong materials ready. In short, Myrmicaria brunia is a spectacular species, full of character, with warrior-like behavior and tons of interesting activity to observe. Definitely not for the forgetful, but if you're passionate, this one's a gem. <laughs> if you're still here listening, that means you're truly into it, so drop the word mandibles in the comments to let me know you made it all the way to the end. See you soon, Myrmico team, for another deep dive into the fascinating world of ants.